Apple's legendary September event is likely less than one month away where they're gonna be revealing their iPhone 14 lineup as well as some other products. So in this video, I'm gonna be discussing exactly which products you should expect to get released as well as the features for those products. But before I get into all of that, I've gotta talk about the date of the event itself, which I think is gonna be happening on September 13th, but there is a chance that it's gonna be happening a week earlier earlier on the 6th. We're just gonna have to wait and see. But now let's get into the products that we should be expecting. Of course, there's gonna be the iPhone 14 lineup, but I'm gonna save those leaks and rumors for the end. But first, let's start off with the Apple Watch Series 8, which is gonna be announced alongside the iPhones at next month's September event. And as far as the actual lineup this year, there is gonna be three models, but it's completely different from what you expect. The Series 3 that's currently on sale for $199 is gonna be discontinued for sure, 100% guaranteed. And how do I know this? Well, the new WatchOS 9 doesn't even support the Series 3 at all. So Apple's getting rid of it. Now, the new SE is gonna be taking place Place of the Series 3 with a starting price of $279 just like it is right now for the regular SE. And as far as the features, the display size and case size is not going to change at all. It's going to be identical. However, there will be upgrades in terms of the specs and features to match everything we had on the Apple Watch Series 6, like the S6 chip and everything else except for the always on display that is not coming to the SE model. And now the regular Series 8 Apple Watch will be basically identical to the Series 7, with the only changes being internal changes, like an upgrade to the S8 chip, potential sensor upgrades, updated Bluetooth specs, and more. However, the display sizes will not change at all, with the cases still being the same 41 and 45 millimeter sizes. But now here's where it gets very interesting because we're expecting another Apple Watch model to be introduced this year, and I fully expect it to be called the Apple Watch Pro. This would essentially be a higher end, higher priced watch model, just like the edition has been for years, except this time, it's actually getting a bunch of upgraded features compared to the regular Series 8. So let's go through everything that we should expect. First of all, it's getting the biggest redesign since the Series 4, according to Mark Gurman, but he says that it's not going to be flat like we expected, but it is going to be new and fresh. It's gonna have a larger display, according to Ross Young, and I think it's gonna be 42 and 46 millimeter case sizes. It's also gonna have a larger battery with much better battery life compared to the other models. It's likely gonna have some new sensors, which might even be exclusive to the Pro model, at least at first. It's gonna have stronger and more durable glass, potentially completely flat on the glass panel on the top. It's gonna have stronger case material, which will be either titanium or maybe even a new liquid metal branded material. There's also a chance it could come with a better display, maybe micro LED, although the rumors don't point to that just yet. And if not, that display will be coming to a future pro Apple Watch model first before any of the other models. And it's gonna have a new high price tag, around $800 to $1,000, which will replace the edition model, in my opinion. So that's basically gonna be the new Series 8 lineup with the SE2, then the regular Series 8, then the Series 8 Pro. So that's gonna be nice. So definitely don't buy any Apple Watch before the Apple event. Now let's move on to the next product that we should expect, and I think that's gonna be the AirPods Pro 2, which could come alongside the iPhones because they're both gonna have matching Bluetooth specs. And why? Well, I fully believe that these will be the first AirPods to support lossless Apple Music with higher bitrate, making them sound incredible. There should be a big step up in terms of sound quality with updated speaker drivers, but the design should be staying the same as before with the short stem. There should be better battery life, better specs, better microphones, of course, loss of support is gonna be a major selling point, and there's a chance that they're gonna be getting a USB Type-C port, 
which is gonna be a huge hint at next year's iPhone 15 Pros getting USB-C. And in terms of the pricing, I think they're gonna be sitting at around $250 to $300, but there is a chance that these might come a little bit later in the fall, but to me, it makes sense for them to launch alongside the iPhone 14 lineup. Now moving on, we might actually get an iPad at this September event, which would be the 10th generation budget iPad, which is finally getting a full redesign with flat sides to match the rest of the iPad lineup. And because of that, it's likely gonna support the second generation Apple Pencil with wireless charging on those flat sides. And it's also gonna be getting a USB type C port Finally. However, Apple is making sure it doesn't look as good as the more expensive iPads by keeping the square display around with the home button and the large bezels to make sure you know that's the budget iPad. And unfortunately, according to Ming-Chi Kuo, iPad production could be impacted by power outages. So there's a chance that this iPad could get delayed until October, which is actually what another Korean blogger is predicting with both the 10th gen iPad and the M2 iPad Pro launching at the October event, which actually makes sense because Apple themselves have said that iPad OS 16 is delayed by around one month, which should be sometime in October. And now let's finally talk about the iPhone 14 lineup, which will be coming at the September event guaranteed. This year, there's gonna be four models, the 6.1 inch iPhone 14, the 6.7 inch iPhone 14 Max or Plus, which is basically the same in terms of the specs and features, but with a larger display and battery. And then you've got the 6.1 inch iPhone 14 Pro and 6.7 inch iPhone 14 Pro Max model, which match the regular ones, but with a bunch of extra features. Now, all of the iPhone 14 models will be coming with a design that's very similar to the current 13 lineup, except with larger camera bumps, as well as the Pro models finally getting rid of the notch and replacing it with a whole plus pill punch design and a super slim speaker grill leading to much thinner bezels. All of the iPhone 14 models should be getting some upgrades in terms of the specs like Bluetooth 5.2 and Wi-Fi 6E and they'll all be getting upgraded selfie cameras with autofocus. Now, other than that, not much is expected to change on the regular iPhone 14 models, but the Pro models are where most of the upgrades are gonna be coming this year. First of all, they'll be getting better displays that go down to one hertz refresh rate, allowing for the new always on display mode alongside the 120 hertz promotion feature that we already have on the 13 Pro models, which the regular 14s won't be getting. They'll also likely be getting a faster Lightning 3.0 port to support faster transfers. And that'll be necessary because the Pro models will be getting brand new 48 megapixel sensors that can shoot 8K video at up to 60 FPS. And with that, we'll likely finally be getting 4K cinematic mode. And because of all of that, we might also be getting 256 gigs of base storage on the Pro models. But there is a chance that this won't happen, so don't get your hopes up too high. We'll likely also get some upgrades to the ultra wide camera and probably upgraded speakers as well. The only downside is that the Pro models will be seeing a price increase of about $100 compared to current prices, but I honestly think it's gonna be worth it for the 48 megapixel main camera and the removal of the notch. But other than what I mentioned in this video, don't expect anything else to come at this September event. And anything else is gonna be a nice surprise and bonus, so we'll see what happens. But let me tell you, I am super excited for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So if you enjoyed this video, click the circle button to subscribe and definitely check out some of those right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.